Aloha, everyone, and welcome back to this episode of Security Matters Hawaii. We're live from the Think Tech Hawaii studios and a belated happy Thanksgiving to all of you out there. Today, we have a very special guest with us. Um, we hunted down Kelly Bond from Brevo. She's a, a busy woman, travels quite a bit, but I got her stationary for you today. She's live with us from uh, Dallas, Texas. Uh, Kelly, thanks for joining us today. How are you doing? Hey, hi. Thanks so much for having me. Or aloha, I should say. Aloha. Welcome. Hey, um, so our, uh, our audience, many of them I think will know you, but some may not. Why well, maybe give them sort of some of your background before we get started, uh, as much as you care to share. All right. Well, I should probably say, hey, y'all, because I am from <laughs> Texas and nice. that's where I'm hailing from today. So, um, so yeah, I have been in the security alarm industry since 1997. And when I think of it year after year, I'm, I just can't believe how much time has passed. Um, and for those of you that are listening from the industry, you know, it's one that once you get into it, it is almost impossible to get out of it. So um, I don't know that I ever aspired to be in this industry, but it has been a great home for me for many years, and I'm certainly glad to be a part of it. Um, I came in working on the financial end of things for a lender that uh, has changed ownership over the years and then did business acquisitions for many years, and about two and a half years ago made the transition over to the integration side of the industry with Brevo. That's awesome. And you said something really interesting that I think a lot of people don't know, or maybe they do. None of us grew up thinking, wow, I want to be in the security industry, right? You right? just sort of find it, and here's this amazing place with these amazing people that I think do amazing things. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Awesome. So in, um, in your role at Brevo, I'll tell you what, we'll talk about Brevo in, in a little bit later. Let's talk about the Women in Security Forum. Um, I know you're on the steering committee. I think you were sort of one of the original uh, members on that forum because it's not that old. Tell me sort of how that got started and what, you know, what drew you to that? Um, you know, what, uh, what, what's going on with the Women in Security Forum that uh, C is running? Okay. So um, I am one of the original members uh, of the committee, and we started at ISC West a year and a half ago, gosh, almost two years ago when you think about it. And... I don't know who it was the uh, you know brainchild of, but there were certainly a group at SIA that said, you know, we need to start recognizing the women in our industry in a way that will promote and boost up these women, but will also create a great platform for other women that are looking to get into technology-driven industry. And uh, so the original ask went to Brevo, to our CEO, and, oh. and uh, to say, hey, who might you have or do you have anyone that you think would be interested in being a part of this? So I spent several years volunteering with the Electronic Security Association, which oh. I think was a good conduit to kind of get into this with SIA. And once I learned what the goal was and how the purpose was really to create a place of inclusiveness and diversity, I was totally in. I said, awesome. I, don't, I don't know what I'm gonna do yet and how I can contribute, but I definitely wanna be a part of it. So we had some early meetings that kind of talked about what can we do? What do we hope to accomplish? What would our ultimate goal be? And through that, came up with a couple of initiatives and some ideas of when and where we could get together, where we would have the potential of having a lot of members or potential members be in attendance. So um, so we kind of started there and then went on to, let's fast forward to this year at ISC West, having already grown by huge numbers in membership. We had a breakfast one morning, which I believe that you were there. Yeah where we packed the room, we had great speakers, and we had women and men that were so supportive of this group and wanting to get involved. Through that, we have had an abundance of applicants for membership, which is it's amazing, especially considering that a lot of association numbers are backsliding, not moving forward like they are with SIA, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, so this, that's kind of how it started. And then uh, when it came time to put committees together, because I had worked on membership at uh, ESA, I raised my hand and said, hey, I'd love wow. to, to do this because I have 
such a heart for women in our industry and, and would love to see that grow. And um, I thought this was a great platform to be able to do that. So that's awesome. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, the, the, the show, the IC web, I think, I don't know. I think we had like a couple hundred people there easily. And I know Easy. that, I know that in the last steering committee, I think, I think we've added another hundred or a hundred and a half. So this is a not, it's kind of like a tidal wave, I think of, of interest. You know what I mean? And yes. for me, what happened is I've met uh, women in a lot of other roles in the security industry that I, I didn't know. You know, Christine, my wife's an owner, which is rare, right? A female owner in our right. industry. I think right. there's probably 10 maybe or something like that, you know, and I uh, met Eddie Reynolds, you know, a manufacturer owner. So mm -hmm. the, the cool thing is there are these roles, you know, um, uh, engineering roles and, and cybersecurity roles and project management roles and all of these roles that are not, I think, I think our industry thought that the women, the role of women was more marketing or sales or something like that. And it's just not the case. You yourself lead a, a global effort for dealer development, right? Right, right. Or for Brevo. Yeah, so. and I think you're, you're exactly right. Yeah. We don't see a lot of women owners um, but I'm amazed. I mean, they're out there and, and this is a great forum for us to kind of, you know, learn who they are and bring their strengths to the table. Um, over the years, I've seen the numbers grow and I'm excited every time I come across a company that has, you know, a, a female owner or, you know, partner, uh, because it just, you know, it, it just absolutely supports what we're trying to do here to say, hey, there is nothing that keeps you out of this industry. In fact, you're welcome here and we want to provide all the support that you need to create your own success. Yeah, I hope this, I hope the forum can also en enable that message a little bit. You know, I think sometimes there's maybe some trepidation to, to try and we encourage everyone in, in like in our organization to try to move over, try other things. If you have other types of interests within the industry, work on those, you know, and then Beyond that, you know, I know we have a bit of a relationship with, I think, the women in cybersecurity. So, you know, maybe there's role for coders in, in the cyber world to work with our manufacturers. You know, I think from an integrator perspective mostly, but the manufacturers such as yourself have a lot of other types of roles that, are, that suit anyone, you know, and, and uh, maybe that's a, a, an additional draw that, you know, having the manufacturer voice uh, coming out of this form is helpful. Right, right. You know, uh, not too long ago, there was a study done, and I don't know how accurate the numbers are that I'm going to share, but I will, I'll tell you what I think we're in the ballpark, um, that we only have about 11% women in our industry. Wow. That's that, low. That is a very small pool. Yeah. Um, I'm very proud of Brevo. I think we're about 32% women, oh, which awesome. is so exciting. And that, that runs the gamut from executive team to engineers, to marketing, to sales. And, and so I love the diversity that we have within our own company, but gosh, 11%, it's almost embarrassing to say that that's the, that's the segment of our big industry, 18,000 or so companies with 11% women. Wow. That's it. Yeah. So, that's... you know, you were saying it before and I'm going to bring it up, you know, <laughs> I won't say you're the way you put it with the old ball guys. Uh, yeah. Um, that is that is not that's present company excluded. Um, but look around. You go to a trade show. You go to a summit. Look around. Yeah. You that eleven percent that may seem big based on what you see out in the marketplace. So yeah. it's not that those eleven percent are necessarily making up those that are out doing things. A lot mm -hmm. of those are are you know, HR roles, their roles that are, that really are in the office. Not that that's a, you know, not a, a very, very important and integral role in any business, but sure. we still just don't see a lot of women out at events, um, mm -hmm. you know, speaking, uh, you know, there's just such opportunity out there. And I, I will tell you, when I first came in the industry, I remember the very first trade show I went to was an ISCE show. Wow. And we we were not exhibiting at that show, but come West the next year, we did exhibit. And I will tell you, there were not a lot of female exhibitors. And I was um, several years younger. And 
the women in a lot of the booths were hired and oh, uh, yeah, the sure. perception was that's who were the the women were that were manning the booths were hired to be there i see and you know and that's that was something that certainly did not um bode well for anyone interested in getting in the industry at that yeah. time but i'm you know that has changed dramatically you don't see that very much anymore in fact i think some of the trade shows have actually banned that as mm -hmm. um as a practice but Anyway, that's what you saw, you know, in the late 90s, early 2000s. So it's, it's really nice to see that that's changed. Yeah, we've we've had we, we we do have that issue. I mean, there's I, I you know, Christine and I'll be at a booth. We'll walk in to talk to someone and they just sit there talking to me the whole time. And she's the president, you know, and then they'll, well, what, do, what do you do? Finally, they'll ask her and she'll go, I'm the president, by the way. And then and they really need to be uh, all of our. Um, resources are hers i don't have any you know what i mean so it's like right and, I, and I, it's just i don't know what that mistake is or that mentality but that that's some of the messaging that i'm hoping that having you know having some of the guys that are involved with women's security form that we can help these men to understand their their thinking There's nothing wrong with it we all have these biases that we came up with but we've got to have a, a safe space to point out that wow maybe what you're thinking needs to be revisited you know and, and we can do that with curiosity and with questions we don't have to rub it in people's faces but there's there's um a sort of a patriarchal sort of mentality that was there you know 20 something years ago and they were all maybe ex-military guys i don't i don't know how it came about that way but that needs to change and hopefully we're we're the beginning of changing that for our industry i mean i joke a lot with these guys i say look we all just need to retire christine says i can retire anytime she's gonna quit paying me so i'm like i can't do that yet so <laughs> So, so and I don't know if a lot of the other guys are in my role, but there's there's a, a level of these guys that just need to open up their chairs, you know, their desks for other opportunities and yeah. and other other people to move around in industry, you know. And it's um I think it's one thing people love it, like you said, they don't leave it once they get in it, and so maybe that's why they stick around because it's important to those of us that are in it, you know. It's a yeah. it's, an, it's a yeah. bit of an interesting dilemma, but learning to make space, learning to mentor, and I want to talk a little bit about mentoring because I've heard some interesting comments about that we're at um we're at about the 14 minute mark so i tell you what we'll do we'll we'll take a quick break uh, we got to pay some bills for about a minute and then we'll be right back with kelly bond hello i'm dave stevens host of the cyber underground this is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just going to scare you out of your mind so come join us every week here on thinktechhawaii.com 1 p.m on Friday afternoons, and then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up, and please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. We are back with Security Matters Hawaii. We've got Kelly Bond here from Brevo. Kelly, we were just getting into this um, problem that I came across where I think it was a, a, a sort of a, some pushback from the Me Too movement where a lot of the men in my industry or in our industry were um, have expressed that they're a little af afraid to be a mentor to women or afraid to uh, help women with their careers. They, you know, that, that um, they could be something they say might be mistaken or misunderstood. And uh, I'm, I'm a fan of having those conversations and, and risking that personally. Um, what's your, what's your, what would be your message to these guys that, you know, we're sort of talking about they, they're hanging around the industry, they're hanging around the industry, and, you know, what can they, they've got a wealth of experience, a wealth of contacts that they can share. What, um, how, how would they engage? And maybe, some, maybe some of the men that have helped you along. I know you work for, for Steve over there, you know, great guy. So um, yeah. share, share with me your, sort of your thoughts on some of that. You know, that's, it's a touchy subject for sure. sure. Uh, sure. You know, anything in the Me Too movement, but I don't think we can all walk around being afraid of yeah. what could potentially happen. I mean, it's, you know, if you behave yourself, you have nothing to worry about. You know, it's easy for me to say, I'm sure, but 
you know, we are at such an opportune and pivotal time in our industry. We are trying to make this shift to being a technology industry so yeah. that we start to earn interest from more, you know, college graduates, Votech school graduates. We've got such a wealth of knowledge that we need to be passing down, but we also need that to amalgamate with what those people bring to our industry, you yeah. know, and, and being afraid of, you know, what, what could be misconstrued, you know, that that's a, unfortunately, I think it's a poor excuse for not sharing your knowledge and not opening a seat for somebody in your organization. Um, you know, I think I've been so fortunate to have amazing bosses in the industry. Um, you know, it started out with, uh, you know, Rich Perry, Bill Polk at SLP Capital. Bill is actually how I ended up at Brevo. Awesome. Um, but then there was a, you know, 13 year span in there where I had a wonderful female CEO, um, Amy Katari, who was wonderful and is a friend to this day. And um, so I've really had such great leaders leading up to Steve, who I'm, you know, so thankful for because he, this topic, what we're talking about today, he has such a passion for this and for culture that it, it is really, um, it's so uncommon, I think, mm. for any business, not just our industry, but I think it for any industry where you've got, you know, a, a male dominant leadership team, executive team, whatever, mm. it's hard to kind of break that mold. But I think Steve is a great uh, example of someone that is working hard to do that within our company, within our organization. And you know, I think if you're afraid to do it, you're missing out on fantastic opportunities to work with some amazing people. So I encourage you, especially if you're looking to fill seats within your organization, you know, if you've got people that ha are at the point of being able to rise up take them under your wing and mentor them, move and mold them into that position. Don't be afraid of it or we're never going to get anywhere. So yeah. that's my opinion on it. Good, bad or otherwise. No, I agree a hundred percent. I mean, there's, and there, I, I think some, in some capacity that maybe people have forgotten how to ask questions and how to be curious, right? There's, there's the, what, you know, ooh, cause you're a, a, tw a 20 year security veteran or whatever it may be. But What's in this other person bring? What kind of new perspective? And that's all the stuff that I'm afraid we could be missing out on as an industry because we're not inviting or, 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 or we're maybe we're beginning to invite, but we're not haven't done a great job of inviting uh, a, a diverse workforce, you know, and, 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 and including those other thoughts. You know, the way we did it 20 years ago is different from the way we do it today. It's going right. to be different probably a lot quicker than that because of the pace of technology. But we've, yeah. we've, we as an industry have got to be curious, I think, and, and open those doors. And, and are we, I don't think we should be afraid to fail. We're a real money making industry. That's another thing I mm -hmm. think people don't know is how well, I think, are we like double digit percentage growth like every year since 1970 or something like that as an industry? Yeah. And it's been amazing. Even, you know, even in the late nineties, 97, 98, mm -hmm. um, you know, and up to the, 2007, 2008, yeah. you know, when the rest of the economy was taken a, an absolute beating, if you looked at multiples that were paid for businesses in the industry and, and it, you see there was such a small shift in the valuation of companies in that time frame, mm -hmm. it should go to tell you that there's something stable and consistent about this industry. And it should be one that more people are interested in getting into. So um, so yeah, I, I think it, the the opportunities are abundant, and and if you don't take advantage of them, you're definitely missing out. Yeah, there's and I, that's what I hope that that message sort of translates out through through the you know the relationship with the women in cyber and and there's so many the executive women's forum or foundation today. There's a bunch of different women's groups, and I think we yep. need to reach into these sort of other pools of knowledge and bring that thought into our industry, you know, because. Because there's a competition for it, right? But we can pay well, sure, and uh, we can teach, we can learn. And there's a lot of lateral movement within our industry that people can challenge themselves. There's no reason to ever really get stuck in any role in this industry that I know of. Right, right. 
Well, and growing companies should have opportunities for people to move into different positions and and do different things. And I think that's a, you know another opportunity to make available to everyone in your organization to say, hey, you know what? If you always wanted to be an engineer, and right now yeah. you're in you know whatever role you're in, we're going to support you getting there. You know, let's yeah. we'll make it available to you. We as a, as a company want to see your growth, and you know it also creates sticky employees to do things like yeah. that. You know, you want longevity, you don't want a lot of turnover, so great opportunity to do it. And you know, I want to mention too, I think that we are seeing a little bit of a shift of what's happening with um, high school graduates. They're not mm. all going yeah. right to college. Sure. More and more every year are choosing a technical school or, you know, Votech type school. Sure. Um, they're getting into the workforce earlier and they're coming with different skills. And oftentimes these are folks that are very committed to what they want to do, what they want to learn. And they bring a whole different subset of qualifications through the door. So I, I think, we also, as an industry, really need to be focusing on that as a feeder to our employee bases. I, you know, it's another great opportunity to get some fantastic folks, you know, men and women, um, but certainly women. I think they're, those numbers are growing in the Votech schools every single year. So okay. we don't want to forego missing unbelievable talent because we're looking just for a four-year degree or, you know, and think about it too. How many people are actually working in the field in which their degree was given. Right. Exactly. I'd say it's a pretty fair number that are not. They're doing yeah. something different. So, 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 you know, just something to keep in mind, I think. Yeah, I 100% agree. I, I, we've had success with some interns out of the high school programs, and I, I follow the Hacker High School got group. I go out and teach them. I teach them how to hack alarms, but then I also give a pitch for our industry, which is kind of fun. So I, I agree with you 100%. There's, um, there's definitely a, a, a pool of talent that's – and they're, they're already sort of – IT talented anyway because of just the way they yeah. grew up, and so they sure. all we have to do is teach them security. I think um, I think the internal training uh, spend is is worth every penny that you know a company's invest in its people without a doubt. Let's um yeah for sure. Let's you talk. Know, and a, does the oh I'm sorry sorry no no I was going to say the um, I wanted to get a little bit of, of a feel for what's going on at Brevo today. I know you because you get around you know globally and talk with your dealer base. So how are, you know, the, the, the cloud services were um, a little bit slow to adopt, but they, you, you see everyone going that way, obviously. Um, so what's, yeah. your, what's your take on it? And then what do you see from that, that dealer base that's out there? From a, is it 11% women as well? Or are, you, are, there, <laughs> are we doing better in cloud services maybe? I don't know. I don't, I don't know what the numbers are as far as women that are, are uh, in the cloud, but I would say that probably more women, because we know of these things, we know mm. that you should be forward thinking, but that's just a generalization. Anyway, <laughs> um, so Brevo is doing fantastic. You know, we were the first ones to cloud and mm -hmm. certainly it took longer to adopt. Thankfully, um, you know, Steve and uh, John Siegel, our team have you know, a total commitment to this. They knew that this is the way things were going to go. So they just kind of held steadfast and said, you know what, we're going to stay on this path. And fortunately they did because it really made us the premier provider of cloud services to access control. We were the pioneers of it. And what this has done and created for a building manager or, you know, a business owner is if you think about the um, accessibility and the ease of use and the convenience of having a cloud-based access control system versus, you know, having an on-premise system, um, they're night and day. It's almost like it's a completely different type of business because, you know, because one of them just gives you all of that. It's the, it's the convenience, it's the scalability of cloud-based physical security. So um, we are growing exponentially. Our customer base is, you know, our dealer base is amazing. Um, we do not sell through distribution. So it's, it's direct or a channel. So we know every single sale that takes place and um, we're doing everything we can to nurture our dealers. We work on that. We talk about it every day. We want to do everything we can to make them better. Um, the fact that we've, we have uh, an open API and 
um, the ability to integrate with other um, management solutions to you know create a completely managed system is amazing. The fact that you can view live and save video right through one application, um, I mean, it's, it's amazing. And so coming from the intrusion side of the industry ah. to Brevo, I will tell you, I had to learn a whole new job because I did not know what I did not know, trust me. So now that I understand it better and I can see where people were a year ago or five years ago, I think, why would you even look at something that was not cloud-based? I mean, it's, it, the capability is phenomenal. Um, you know, we scale from small to medium-sized businesses to enterprise. So, um, you know, and you could have a location in, um, you know, the UK and one in New York and be on your phone and remove a credential or set up a schedule or whatever you need to do. So it's, um, it's such an exciting time to be yeah. in this space. The growth is phenomenal. Uh, and what we're also doing, we, we actually had a press release that came out a couple of weeks ago where we are integrated with Alula. So we are actually going to have the ability to control your alarm panel through Brevo on air. Awesome. Uh, so, which that is super exciting for us. And for me, that gives, I, I love the opportunity that this gives us to go out to that, um, you know, security, uh, um, more intrusion dealer market mm -hmm. that may not have even considered doing access control in the past. So, um, so I, it's very, very exciting uh, and, and a fun time to be in this space. Yeah, it's, it's amazing it took our industry sort of a, a while to understand that we're, you know, everybody else was managed service, managed service, managed service, and that's where we're headed. And now they're, you know, they're finally, I think the adoption rate's catching on as everybody leaves all that hardware behind that they used to have to support. Yeah. A really great insights there. Kelly, I want to thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. The time flies. Um, enjoy your holiday season. If I don't see you till the spring, probably at ISC West. And uh, for our viewers out there, I really appreciate you joining us today. Um, we've, um, we've covered a little bit of ground with women in security. We're going to continue to cover that ground. Um, if you're interested in our industry, please, uh, please go to Women in uh, Security Industry Association, Women in Security Forum, and check us out. We'd like to have you. Take care, everybody. Aloha. Thank you. Bye-bye.